So after college, I realized that all I have to do is have ideas and that they're, you can make money on ideas. So if you have them, just, you just have to execute them. So for instance, I woke up one morning and just was like time for a time machine. Like, let's make it. And then I just did it. It's kind of that simple. So what we got here, we got the bass, we have the drum, and then we have the time. Meet Brian Wallace. His science is music. He's a sound engineer who takes his music with him from the studio to his car, which he has turned into a futuristic machine. Welcome to Dub Robot. We are in the lander. We're about to embark on this mission. And uh, <clears throat> this is the reverse function. Mm -hmm. Gets you out of some tight binds. So yeah, this is a T21 class lander. Uh, this was made in, in the future. Uh, this actually is a, has a manufacturing date of 2058. And that's hard to believe because we're in 2015 now, I believe. I have saved some parking tickets here. I generally get stopped by doing that. There's one from 2013, parking illegally. Uh, other ones, unnecessary gathering of people. Expecting those are those are officials. They have different clothes on than everyone else. Sometimes, just you know, officials will come up and they'll say, "I'll," they'll say, "Show me your credentials," and I'll give them my time transportation credentials, and they're like, "This isn't a real thing," and I'm like, "Well, that's what the media tells you." We have, for instance, this is a, it's a wasted time storage container. What we can do with the wasted time is we can recycle it. So like if you've ever been like, I don't know, in like a bad relationship or in a situation where there's no good time ahead, we can take that, recycle it into better times. The mission of Dub Robot is to spread dub, which is a genre of electronic music that grew out of reggae music in the 1960s. Well, dub music is the most futuristic music uh, on the planet currently. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the end, uh, well, I guess the beginning, the beginning of the end of, of reggae, certainly. And reggae is the beginning of music after classical music. Like it went from classical music straight to reggae and then reggae straight to the future. When Brian isn't working on Dub Robot, he can be found in the recording studio, engineering dub music alongside legendary Hopeton Brown. Dub music is, um, I'm going to be sure showing you some of it, is rearrangement. You know, instead of like a conductor would use a stick and tell everybody when to play, when to stop, what volume, so forth, so forth. Well, we use the faders to do that instead. Hopeton Brown's stage name is Scientist. He is one of the founders of dub music and is responsible for developing new technology such as the modern faders and other assets on a sound mixing board that are popularly used today. A popular technique of dub includes taking an original song and remixing it by adding extensive echoes, reverberations, and dubbing vocals. 
giving it more bass. We're going to be taking sling ting and we're going to be adding some different elements from out the Casio keyboard to show what the full potential of what it could be. Because I hear what's on the record is really elementary. Well, that's the main thing that that separates it from other kinds of music is, is the echo. So uh, you could have normal music and then you put echoes on it and now it's dub music. While by night, Brian sends out echoes of dub music to connect people, during the day, Brian continues to carry out his mission to spread music through various jobs, such as teaching, mixing music, and engineering new music technology. He is currently one of the producers and a band member of a big band ska orchestra, Western Standard Time. He's a really busy guy. He gets pulled in a lot of different directions because he, he also has so much expertise from the technical side of things. He's actually the, the, the catalyst for this actually becoming something because it was something that I had thought about for two years um, sort of on my own and started talking a little bit about the idea with certain musicians and would you be interested if this were to happen and they said oh yeah sure and it was sort of just possibilities I'd really like for this to happen and he just flat out just asked me he said, yeah, why don't we just do it this was the idea let's put together a bunch of jazz guys that kind of know ska with a bunch of ska guys that kind of know jazz. And let's see what happens when we put them in a room. And we did, we made a very successful record and now we're on number two. There's a lot of people that play ska and reggae on the planet, and there's there's people that I just like want to always want to hear more. Like I never want the show to end if I'm playing next to them. So all those people, you know, we got them together and we put them on the first record and now on the second record with a couple changes, like basically additions. Um, so bigger, better, higher, faster, louder. Now swing your arms. He's, he's sort of solution based, you know, like uh, you talk to people and they all they talk about all the stumbling blocks of things like, oh, but you got to do this and this and you're not going to get there. And he's more of sort of like, a, all that's possible, let's just do it. You know? and we just kind of sail over those speed bumps. His mission to connect people through bass led him to one of his recent projects of working with Subpack. Subpack is an audio technology that transfers low frequencies directly to your body and provides you with a new physical dimension to the music experience. The music that I've made since the invention of the Subpack has been tons better than the music before. Now you can feel bass, do all your work, and then put it together because you're always feeling the balance of the music. So it's an idea that's very much from the future. And we are on a mission, Subpack and Dub Robot are on a mission to tell the world about tactile sound, tell the story of tactile sound, and help people feel that. I have a plan. Uh, it involves spreading bass. And I think once, once we get the bass out there, other things will grow from that garden. In 10 years, I think, I think there'll be a knob on an airplane that you can, you're sitting down, you're like, oh, I just want to feel bass, right? Because you pay for the headphones, you don't pay for the movie on the plane, right? 
I definitely see that in the future. As far as music goes, it's gonna get better. It's not gonna get worse. Don't